When you're moving from place to place to place Good morning, good morning, morning Good morning, morning Welcome back to the morning show on Tobago Updates Television. I am Adana Kambi, and we continue conversation in studio with our guest. This morning, we're speaking with Superintendent Rodil Kirk of the TTPS as, we, as he brings updates to us about things happening in Tobago over the past week and weekend, and also to address a matter, uh, you know, in schools, school violence. Good morning, Superintendent. It's always a pleasure having you here with us. Good morning, Adana. Good morning to Tobago Updates and your viewers locally and internationally. Yes, it's always a pleasure having you here with us as we get the details surrounding things happening in Tobago. And in our last conversation, it was so pleasant to know the reports that came in from Carnival. It was a safe Carnival and everything kind of, you kind of had a handle on everything that was happening in Tobago, you know, using your strategies. So we want to get some updates. There are a few things that happened in the past week that we want to address. And I'm going to hand over to you as we start the conversation. Um, primarily, you know, we had that shooting incident and then yes. we had the, the other situation as well. So let's get into it this morning. Yes. Good morning again. I came here last week and I spoke about, you know, how the Tobago public behave so well during the carnival period. And I, you know, I extended my gratitude to them. Um, what was unfortunate is that right after all that, we had one shooting incident which resulted in the, uh, a person losing their lives. Again, I, I use this platform to extend my sincerest condolences to the family of Vernon Thomas. Um, rest assured that we are currently investigating that matter. And you know, um, we are pursuing, pursuing all leads available right now to the police. Also over the weekend, what we noticed is that we a uh, suspicious pa package was, was um, discovered in the Cove area. And initial um, tests revealed that it may be cocaine. Um, this, despite what the news has said about packets, it's a single packet. It's about one kilogram with a street value of over half a million. And again, this is an investigation that we that is ongoing. I I want to also say that we don't have any evidence to support whether, in fact, that that find is related to the the oil spill. You know, um, people people have their tendency of you know sort of having their mind directed a particular way. But so far, uh, we have no evidence that there is any connection, even though the item was found in the vicinity. Yes, because there was suspicion and, you know, talks about that, um, that being linked to that, that vessel as well. So I'm, just, I'm happy that you were able to, you are able to clarify that first. But before we even move on, I want to go back to the shooting incident in that particular area. Um, it's not the first one in that area. Sadly, this person, it was a fatality in this incident. And some have dubbed that area as a hot spot, right? And in the Tobago space, that is of concern to us. What is your assessment on that area? Do you consider it a hot spot? And I know you are not able to give us too much of your strategy, but how can we make people who, because this is an area where people traverse a yes. lot, how do we restore confidence in people casually walking in that area to get to the taxi stand or wherever they need to get to on a daily basis or even in the evening times? Rightfully so. Um, we have implemented some measures where we do our stop and searches even with um, operations with the canine but seeing that it's something that is continuing we have to change our approach i i would not mention it on air as to what we intend to do but in the weeks coming there are plans afoot that we will put in place to treat with this on a long term as a sort of long-term measure in dealing with these issues around in the center of scarborough because i mean um People tend to disregard the lives of others. And we, the police, must, you know, we, we, we are starting to be proactive in respect of that, those incidents. Because this is about the third incident in that area in recent times. And it's something that, you know, we need to, to work on. We are working on it. And very soon, there would be a difference. I assure you about that. Well, that gives me a measure of confidence and I look forward to the approach to ensuring that we feel that we're safe again in that area. Of course. Right. Um, we want to move on to another topic. 
We want to talk about another recent incident that took place in, in this space in our schools. We have spoken about violence in schools already and uh, we see a resurgence of it. Well, not necessarily a resurgence, but an incident that took place recently, which left one of the students in a, in, in a critical condition in the hospital. Give us some information on this, this situation. Where is it at now? What is the condition of the student who was in the hospital? What is his position now? And what is happening to the perpetrator? Right. Our, our last report in respect to the condition and status of the, the injured child is that he is now in a stable condition and is recovering comfortably. Um, unfortunately, again, in respect to the perpetrator, um, he's not in our custody. However, the police has initiated an investigation and very soon um, I know a file will be forwarded to me and then from there we will, we will um, engage our legal officers to see what direction we need to go on completion of that investigation. Because I mean, yes, rightfully so, we have seen that all our schools within, within Tobago are now, you know, has been affected by violence and it's something that we, we need a, a long-term approach to treat with. Um, we have tried police in the school, we have tried collaborating with all the stakeholders, and yet still there's a work in progress, we need to do that. What I want to urge in going forward is that this incident happened in the, in the view of other students. I would like to see an intervention where these children could be exposed to counseling, even the teachers who, who witness it. Um, I know from our part, we will try our best through our victim and witness support, we will also try to implement further measures in where the police could be a part of, of the stakeholders in terms of operating within the schools that are identified as those, you know, more, um, those who have more frequency of the violence. And one such school, I don't want to label any school, but seeing that um, Signal had some recent incidents, it's, it's going to be treated with priority going forward. And, you know, we want to get to, because sometimes we respond to the end result, but we want to get to the, the, the root of what causes this type of violence in schools. We want to address things like social issues, the homes that these children come from, the communities that they live in, the things that they are exposed to. How do we address these things to bring some measure of support to, to, to show these children that this is not the way, that they are alternatives? You know, I know sometimes you, have, you might have trauma, you might have some sort of negative experience, but how do we mitigate to get children to express their disappointments, their anger, or whatever emotions in a different way? And I know that school is peer pressure in school, but how do we deal with these things? We have to go into the communities. Well, how do we deal with these things? You're talking about the, the thing and like my pause raised because you see, what I realize is that most of the children who are involved in violence are, are those can, who can be easily identified because they, they, you know, they, they some, some of them have a history. And when you look at some of those children, um, you will pass through the communities and late at night you will see them on the roadway with no supervision. And again, you know, I'm not blaming entirely parents, but parents must know their responsibility. They must take charge. They mustn't leave it up to the teachers and the police. They must have some level of control over the child. And again, I don't know if there is some measure in which you could implement anger management in the curriculum. Because, I mean, when you look at it, children feel that the only way they could resolve their issues now is by the use of violence. So we need to have the churches, we need to have the communities involved in terms of having some sort of programs even within the schools on a weekly basis where you could, you could pass on that information as to how to deal with conflict and conflict re resolution among children. If we don't do that, we may very well have this situation go out of control. But I know from a police perspective, we will try to do as much uh, on our part to go into those schools and have our officers you know, um, provide information via lectures and interaction so that, you know, they could tend to mitigate against some of these instances where you see violence occur. And yes, that is important. You see, the thing about it is, and we've had this conversation before on the show, where it's a community effort, yeah. where it is, you know, back then I used to say it takes a village to raise a child. And so we have to take an interest in our children. We have to take an interest in the generation that is upcoming. And so we need to provide you're saying we need to provide these kind of spaces where they yeah. feel that they can, you know, 
express themselves in a way that is conducive. Of course. And again, going forward, eh, what, I, what I see, you know, as I say, within every school, they could identify the persons who are likely to, to, to be the troublemakers. I'm not saying that you're right off these children, but what you could do covertly or, or otherwise, you could pass on that information to the police. So the police could have an early intervention in terms of getting the, the, the relevant authorities, whether through the social work unit or even the police, the community police, to sort of engage these children. Because if you leave it and keep it secret because you want to cover it up, at the end of the day, look at what will would happen is other children are being impacted, teachers are being impacted, and, you know, all these we have to look at the long-term effects which can result from violence in school. So we need to, we need to intervene now. It's not, uh, uh, it, it doesn't reach crisis proportion within the Tobago space, um, but we need to deal with it now. What about, we have a lot of um, police youth clubs around Tobago. How many clubs do we have on average? And what is the subscription like? And what do they do in terms of recruiting more youths to come into their clubs and to be active? Because once you, I, I believe once you provide that kind of space for them, it should be able to assist. Well, I can tell you that we have quite a number of active youth clubs, police youth clubs within the division. And they are well you know, people participate a lot, parents and children. But again, too, to reach out to, to most of the youth, you need parents also to, to instill that, you know, within the, the child. Some parents leave it up to the child alone. And I think maybe you need to get more involved. Because if you want your child to grow up in a safe environment or to learn things in order to, to stay away from that kind of recalcitrant behavior, you need to be involved. And that is what we are asking. There are several, there are Mount St. George, Roxborough, Charlottesville, Keenan, Meesnall, very active youth clubs within the division. And we need to, wherever you are, you need to reach out. And, and you know, um, I know the youth club leaders also reach out throughout the schools and so on. I am going to have a conversation with some of them so that we can, you know, do more to, to make sure that we put it in the space to have that, you know, level of arm. Um, that people can have the information in order to come forward to them. So that is something that we are going to do going forward. You know, that is a welcome, welcome initiative because we really want to get our young people in a positive space where they are able to express themselves under some kind of guidance. Of course. You know, under some course. kind of guidance that can take them and channel them through. Because a lot of people have um, talents and they're wasted because of... Indeed, indeed. And the negative influence also that comes from things like let's say social media, the music they listen to, and all of these influences, we have to find ways to, you know, to intercept these things and provide alternatives for them. And I do agree with you because when you look at the average teenage child, is that they will lock away for many hours and on their phone, TikTok and otherwise and that. I mean, we are in the age of technology and we may not be able to totally eradicate it. But if parents get a little more involved, they will be able to control some of the instances where these things happen. And if they could educate the children about it, you know, we'll have less work for the teachers to do and less work for the police to do. Because at the end of the day, some parents are, are, are so naive that they would, my child is a good boy and this and that, and you do do that. But the thing about it, when you look at the interaction, when you're home, you don't even have a conversation, you leave the child to be on the tablet or on the, on the device totally a whole day and without you even having a conversation. So we need to go back to the way where we have that level of personal interaction with the child and that could change a lot going forward. That's right. That's right. You know, you really need to have that level of communication with your children, within your home, within your family to know what is happening. And, you know, I, I just want to reinforce all that you're saying in terms of we need to come together it's a community effort um it's a social issue that we're facing here in tobago and we want to make our spaces safe we want to ensure that our children grow up and come up in a safe environment with confidence in themselves and knowing that there is support for them out there of you course. know in closing is there how do you want to, to, to address our public our viewers right now well well first of all let me just take this opportunity to to thank the public for, you know, cooperating with our smart campaign and our road safety campaign. I, I, throughout the carnival, we didn't have much issues where, well, no, no one got arrested for DUI. And we know that, you know, it, it had to be that you actually listen to what we were saying. 
But in terms of going forward, in terms of violence in schools and safety within our community, notwithstanding that the carnival period is over, we urge members of the public to continue to be vigilant, continue to, to, to you know, peruse your space. When you see something out, call the police, you know, and I am thankful that, you know, citizens are hearing us, even with giving us the information to help us to respond, even as recent as yesterday with that fine. I'm just saying that, you know, we need to take charge of our peace. And it hurts me when I see within the school, children are that violent. Imagine, you know, if we allow this to, to get out of hand, what will happen in our future? The children are our future, and we need to have that intervention now. So I'm calling upon all the stakeholders involved in, in, in child issues and social interventions to reach out. I am willing to, to be part of it in going forward. I know we have a we have our head of our um, special victim unit, Tobago, who will be engaging in going forward in some activities within the school in terms of violence. But, you know, we need to do more. And I ask that, you know, all the stakeholders, you know, could reach out and we will be reaching out so that we could do it as a collaborative effort going forward from today. Right. So that I'm just asking that. So stakeholders look forward for me um, contacting you soon. Thank you so much. That's a collaborative, we're calling for a collaborative effort here to ensure that we mitigate the situations in schools and in general safety around communities in Tobago to ensure that we have a safe space for generations that are upcoming. And we want to end this conversation on a very, very light note. We want to say congratulations going out to ACP Junior Benjamin, class of 1998 at the Signal Hill Secondary School. 1988. Yeah. Who has been approved it, uh, for the substantive position of Deputy Commissioner of Police. We want to say hearty congratulations to you. Congratulations to the TTPS. We want to say all the very best in this position. And we want to put our support behind you and behind the entire TTPS. Not, notwithstanding, Mr. Benjamin is a, is a colleague, a, a son of the soil. That's right. And I want to ex extend my sincerest congratulations to him as well. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Superintendent Kirk, for coming in on a weekly basis to give us our updates. We've been talking to Superintendent Rodil Kirk as it relates to things happening around Tobago over the past week and weekend. And of course, a call for corporate intervention to assist, for co collaboration rather, to assist with mitigating crime and criminal activities on the island of Tobago. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short break before we continue with conversations. And of course, before we go, we want to invite you to share the live. Share the life, share the life. We'll be back.